Welcome to Meme Ranch. I am here with Ty Wynn, also known as Simon from fishtank.live. This is Exfala, and I'm here with Kalen. Welcome to the Meme Ranch. Hey, what's up, y'all? Uh, this is Ty, known as Simon from Fish Tank. I'm happy to be here with you guys today. And I don't eat ass because pizza give me enough crust. <laughs> Meme Ranch. That was uh, something you came up with last night, right? Where, where, where were you at yeah. whenever you like were thinking of that? Um, I was at an open mic uh, trying out some new comedy material. And I just thought of that. I just thought it would be a good treat. So I tweeted it. Did you think of that on stage or before you went up there? Uh, before I went up there. Is that when you do a lot of your like, joke smithing? Yeah. This, wow. I at the open mic, yeah. So it's something that kind of comes to you like in like the heat of the moment. You're like, sometimes whenever I'm like in the shower or like about to like go to work or something like that, I just think of the dumbest shit and I, I like DM it to my friend and yeah. I just to like see just to see what he what he says to it, you know, like something nasty, you know. I know what you mean. I come up with a lot of stuff in the shower or just walking in the park. Any activity that's like relaxing. Well, I don't so, even think about comedy, and then it just comes to me. So you, you're, you're, you would you consider yourself naturally funny? Um, we're more of a performer. I think ever since I was a kid, from middle school to all the way to like high school, I made like my friend laugh like a lot. So I guess I have some funny element to me. But stand-up comedy really helped me zoom in and hone my skill. So I think anybody could learn how to be funny. So let's uh, let's just kind of take it from there because that's that's a really cool place to unpack. Like I want to know, you know, we we were kind of looking at some of your comedy uh, in the days before this. We saw some of your your awesome twenty twenty jokes, like uh, ones about Bill Gates. And stuff like that. And we were uh, just laughing at that because, yeah. you know, that's like a joke that wouldn't have even been told like, you know, four or five years ago, you know, per, uh, yeah. per se. And like, you know, uh, we, we were just wondering, like, like, where were you, you know, like 10 years ago, like maybe today, like if you could like even yeah. what guess jo what jokes would you have told 10 years ago? Um, what type of joke I would do 10 years ago? <laughs> yeah. Um. Ten years ago, was that doing nine eleven? No. Ten years ago would be two thousand and thirteen. Um, I yeah, don't what's a, what's a good twenty thirteen joke happening? Um, probably about the end of the world, you know, in two thousand and twelve, and it never happened. Uh huh. So I probably have a joke about the Mayan calendar. Right. But I wasn't even doing comedy back then. Only did comedy for eight years. So, so what what made you jump into actually doing the stand up? I was working at a call center and that job is kind of like, you know, customer service, so it's kind of like energy draining. Mm -hmm. So my coworker always tell me that I'm so funny, I should do stand up comedy cuz I make joke at the workplace a lot. And um just one day I decided to go to an open mic after work. Uh, to try it out. I didn't tell anybody, so I just went, and I was so nervous, I swear. When I got on stage, I actually had tears in my eye, but I didn't cry on stage. After I got off stage, like, I started crying. From nerves? Yeah, nerves. Very nerve-wracking. Well, were the people in the audience crying? <laughs> <laughs> Probably crying at how bad it was. <laughs> nah, they weren't crying. 
have you, have you ever, have you ever, have you ever made any, anyone cry with a joke? Like, like not, maybe like not in like a, you know, like, oh, you hurt me kind of way, but just like a, like, oh, that was a beautiful joke. Like, yeah, I don't know if it's one single joke on like my whole performance, but that's like this, uh, this mom, uh, she's like a white lady. She looks like she's in her 40. And, uh, when I was performing at this coffee shop, uh, she was crying like there's legit tears coming down her eyes. She was crying, laughing. So I had to address. I was like, "Are you crying?" And she said, "Yeah, it's so funny. I haven't laughed like this in a while." So I think <laughs> she was going through like some emotional stuff, and I guess I hope her release some emotional laughter. I you guess I don't know. Was? Do you remember what your what your bit was when you were? causing that reaction um yeah it's a really dumb joke i don't say anymore it's something about how people don't understand what i'm saying uh they think i'm talking about something serious even though i'm not uh this person thought i talked about how i was deep in ch china but i was really talking about how i was deep in that vagina <laughs> it's so dumb that made her cry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would have felt so inappropriate in that audience because here, this lady next to me would have been crying. I would have been busting out laughing. And I, <laughs> yeah, she was there with her friend too. Like the uh -huh. lady friend. Can, can you, can you talk about a little bit? I, I, I think it's awesome that you, you, you have such a good way of like blending in, like, you know, your, uh, the, the things that, that, that you've overcome in your life, like into the comedy that you talk about. And I think that like, I've seen some, some of your sketches where it was like talking about like overcoming like some like insecurities and stuff like that. And like, was there, was there ever a point or like, do you, do you still have like the same, the same kind of nerves that you, uh, that you felt like that you had like the first time you ever came up and like told a joke or like by now, does it, does it feel like it's just like second nature? Like it's just like riff after riff kind of feeling. So now um my nerves are more under control because i feel like i've been through so many different scenarios with stand-up comedy so now it's more of like excitement more of like electricity rather than like oh i'm gonna survive this oh uh will i survive on stage now it's more like fun but i still get nervous sometimes if like the place where I'm at, I know that it's gonna be shitty, cause like that the if I'm like at a bar when like all the TV are on, the acoustic is bad, the sound system is bad, and nobody's paying attention. Like I know it's gonna be like a shitty show, so I get kind of nervous. Do you have the ability to grab the audience's attention in those situations? Do you have like a, a trick or a method or just like sheer energy, like the energy you bring to the stage? Yeah, so my energy has to be a little bit higher than my environment and the people there. So I really have to, like, if, like, the place is not built for stand-up comedy, then I really need to, like, bring some energy or say something to make them pay attention to me. So I address whatever that's going on. Like, if they're watching basketball, then I say something about that basketball game. That's actually a nice talent because so many comedians, they seem like they have their set and they stick to it. Yeah. And I noticed that I only watched one video of yours from a live stand up, and I did pick up on that. I felt like that you were, your a lot of your humor depends on what you're getting back from your audience. Yeah. I definitely uh, vibe off the audience. Like yesterday night I performed at a barbecue place, a uh, Cooper barbecue when like nobody knew stand up comedy was going on, there's just family eating barbecue. So I had to address like that before I begin my set. Do you do you feel like um you know you, you you're you're based in Texas and right now I feel like I keep seeing so many posts online about Texas comedy scene. Yeah. And uh Austin just just a, specifically Yeah. Right? Austin yeah. in general. I mean like I feel like it's always been kind of like a hub, but I feel like even more so now. I don't know what it is. There's just this this aura that's em emanating. Maybe it's because of some of the new venues that just opened up in the area. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know if you 
It's because it's, it's, it's Ty. Ty's bringing the the heat to, to Austin. Right. <laughs> oh, thank I just you. I, I just want to know you. like what is I take all responsibility for making Austin <laughs> hot. <laughs> honestly there's a lot of but there's really, a lot of um you're the sauce box of austin no no i say that i say yeah. that because i feel like there, i feel like there, there's a lot of comedians in austin that i know of that you're a lot funnier than i'm not going to name them because i don't want to hurt their feelings i don't want to you know just like you yeah, know gas you up that. too much <laughs> you don't want to make enemies and burn bridges yeah <laughs> hey, but what do you what do you have to say to the uh thai fans out there in austin right now is there a Thai fan base? Uh, what do I have to say? Yeah, what do you have to say? Or even um, to Simon fan base? Like a Simon fan base. Uh, I have a pretty solid fan base. So shout out what? to all my fans for supporting me, coming to my show, watching my YouTube comedy special. So I appreciate all of that and my rap songs. Yeah, I wanna I wanna get into 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 the rap songs too. I feel like that was something that a lot of people. Who who just came to know you like myself in the in the in the past few weeks really got to get a a, a sort of like appetite for your different talents, and for 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 one thing, I feel like you know the Simon the Simon fan base is on is on fire right now. I've I've, I've been seeing you making posts about fish tank fans coming to your shows now. I mean, yeah, that, that's um, that's, that's the big. reason why I got on fish tank to gain more fans and uh. It kind of like helped me gain some traction as far as new fan goes. I didn't know Fish Tank was that big. What what can I can, what was your introduction to Fish Tank? Like how did you end up even finding you could possibly be on? Um is the stream still going on? It says yeah, we're, 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 now or something. Kaylin, it looks yeah, like it's still it's still it's me? still going on, yeah. Okay, cool. So how I got on Fish Tank was one of my friends, um, he's a big fan of Fish Tank, and he's on Twitter. So he would do like a Fish Tank recap every night at 8 p.m. on Twitter. So the fan of Fish Tank would tune in. Um, he know me through stand-up comedy. So he sent me a text. He said that, hey, are you interested on being on a reality TV show? I know the producer and one of the contestants just dropped out. Um, so I asked him what type of reality show. And he said that it'll hurt your chance if you know what it is. So I was like, yeah, sure. Send my info to the producer. So he sent my Instagram to uh, to Jet. You know Jet? Jet sure. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah, Jet. Yeah, so after that, Jet hit me up pretty much like this same night. Uh, they were really interested on having me on. And uh, after I got off the show, I figured out why. Because I kind of looked like a previous contestant named Simon. No, <laughs> Simmons. Oh, Simmons, He's Simmons, yeah. <laughs> Simmons. What are you talking about? Yeah. You guys are twins. So, so when I first got there the first night, right, before I went inside the house, they told me, hey, could you introduce yourself to the other contestant as Simon? It'll be funny. You know, I have no idea why. So I just did it. So when I said, hey, my name is Simon, they all look at me shocked and they all start laughing. I think yeah. I saw moment happen live maybe oh you saw know. that yeah so none of them would talk about simon because they said they're not supposed to so i found out about simon like after i'm out of fish tank wow what was that you, like? did, you, you yeah. had no idea what was it like when you found out yeah i have no idea yeah i came in that show like not knowing pretty wait, much wait, anything so 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 what was it like to come out of the tank and like find out that like you're because there's been a couple doppelgangers you know betty we got yeah. lance you know like what, what how did it feel for yeah. you to be like the doppelganger of like the like sex offender <laughs> 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 even though you're not like even though like we're talking to the most pure honest lovable yeah. tie win everyone like uh, this is are you are the guy that got you on that show or are you guys still friends <laughs> after this <laughs> um i never met simmons um 
No, 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 no. The, the guy who's... Uh, I saw the guy. Twitter. I don't know if I should follow him on Twitter, you know? <laughs> I mean, I should thank him for the opportunity if you think about it. Because <laughs> Ralph Simmons, there won't be a sign, man, so... Do it right now. Do it on this. On hey, thank, thank you, Simmons. Yeah. Hey, shout out to Simmons. Um, yeah. It's kind of funny that... I didn't know about the doppelganger thing. Uh, until I saw uh, Lance. Remember Lance? He's a doppelganger of Vance. Yeah. So it, it didn't hit me till like I got out of the tank. And then there's Betty. Um, you, you know Chris? Like yeah. Fatty? SR Fatty? Nobody's a doppelganger for him. That'd be hard. <laughs> <laughs> you know you know who wants to fight him though right now is Boogie. Boogie uh, want to fight SR Fatty? Yeah. Who would take the Who would take the W on that? I think I, th- I think Chris. I think with some what? I think I think with some training, Chris would Chris would win in a heartbeat. He, can, I mean, Boogie Boogie's older, you know. He's he, he he's at an advantage. Yeah, you know, Boogie just, is he, older. I saw I saw Boogie, but Boogie won his fight though. That's true. Yeah, that's a good point. You know, he's he's up again. I mean, I think Boogie with Sam's help, height advantage. Maybe right, he might be a little bit taller. I'm not sure. Yeah, but if you ever watch sumo wrestling, height's not always the advantage. Yeah, what kind of fight they have? Maybe, Maybe. if they're doing sumo, that'd be cool. They should be doing sumo style. Yeah, if they have like a creative sumo thing instead of boxing, that'd be cool. You should yeah, get that. Actually, be a lot cooler. That get more Japanese people to watch it. Oh, you get should more organize. Asian fans. You should, you should organize that. Yeah, <laughs> I think Creative it'd be sumo. Yeah, hilarious. That'd be funny. Host it, host it in Austin. Host it in Austin, Texas. Yeah, sumo. do it in Austin. See, that's that's that's, not that's a bad the thing. Yeah, actually, that's that that's the thing that people right now are fighting to like keep in Austin. You know, like only in Austin would you find you know like you know sumo wrestling for like uh for like Americans. You know, like American people. <laughs> you know, and. uh I don't know. Uh, I feel like I feel like that's just, that's like such I mean, an Austin thing. Uh, here, here's the pitch for you, and you can use this. It's yours. Creator crush. Creator quest. Instead, yeah, for instead yeah, of clash. Creator quest. Because it's creator crust. <laughs> no, 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 crush. <laughs> like heavy, like crush. Crust might be good though too. <laughs> that's. Kind of... <laughs> it's kind of gross, but kind yeah, of good. That might be a good name. Creator quest. So what is it? And okay, so I want to get a little bit into the what? Go ahead. Oh, we're we're we're, we're getting some lag interference here. We're, we're gonna see. Let's go. Let's do a quick three second, just like yeah. pause. So if it on my side, I... it's like your side more. Oh yeah, but it was good. It was good just a little bit ago. Yeah. Whose Wi-Fi are you still in? Uh, I'm on my dad. I just rolled down the window. I don't know if that helped. Maybe. Does that help? <laughs> I think it helps. It did help. Look, we're good right now because I rolled down the window. So, like, signal could come in. Duh. Right? That's, that's why right. you need to, that's why you need to sleep in a, in a, in a different room as your, as your phone because it yeah. emits these, these frequencies. Yeah, yeah. we got. Oh, we're- yeah. Do you do that? I don't do that. I, I I put I put my phone like 150 feet away from me at night. Do you notice any difference? You know, I gotta say I think it's like just like maybe like in the mornings. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, because that at night I'm just won't, that way people won't hack your brain right while you're sleeping. Right. Yeah. But then yeah. at night at night I just doom scroll and sometimes I fall asleep on it with it on my chest so. It doesn't really make a difference, anyways. It averages oh, out. Okay. Maybe, maybe I think I think it helped to roll down though. Yeah, I think so. But then I hear like the outside noises. Y'all hear the outside noises? Not really. No. Okay. Now I'll keep it no, down. No, no, I can't hear. I can't hear that. Cool. So, so Ty, what else can you tell us about? Like, what was it? I want to know what it was like to walk into the house, the fish tank, for the first time. What was that sensation? What'd you see? Um, What'd you you smell? The the first time they were having the camping challenge. So there was like no furniture. 
the whole like living room area have like this fake grass that you see on like many golf courses and stuff and they have tents out and people were sitting around in like a fake campfire and uh they just walked me in and I was carrying two bottle of vodka they want me to drink with everybody and play truth or dare to get to know all the contestants so it, it was very exciting meeting all the contestants um, just to play truth or dare and just figure out what the hell was going on. Uh, the TTS system was surprising to me. Yeah, you what know, was that TTS? like? What was that like getting like spoken down to? Um, it felt like a voice from like from a third person perspective. And most of those boys just make fun of you. Like, they was going on about my hair, like, relentlessly. They made fun of my hair so much. They uh, paid, they they paid, they paid $40. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They, they spent enough money telling me how fucked up my hair is. I should get it cut. Like, I all think kind of jokes about my your, hair. Your head of hair is beautiful, <laughs> man. It's, it's like, I mean, I can see why. Could they see it from an up top angle? So they see right. like a whole big ball spot, like so. And uh, they keep comparing me to John, who I found out later. I mean, throughout the whole house, that guy's infamous. Like everybody talked about him, even though he's not there anymore. But he just <laughs> came back, right? <laughs> Yeah, no, yeah. I mean, I was going to ask, like, who who do you think has a sexier voice, oh, you or yeah. John? My question. <laughs> yeah, he's got um, the sexier voice, you or John. Who have the sexier voice? Yeah. Hmm. John have a good voice. It's just kind of, like, stuttery, I would say, mm -hmm. right? His voice kind of, yeah. like, can't describe it. You know what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um... Fuck it, I think I have the sexier voice. There you go. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. That's the that's the that's the confidence. No, because yeah. I mean I think I think I think that um you know it's it, it it's funny because like you 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 have the I woke the fish tank, you know, I can't even yeah. say it, you know, but yeah, but you know I that's that, that that's tank. something that John that's that's exactly how John would say it. Oh really? <laughs> I yeah, think so, um maybe. you know when people compare me to him and I figure out who he is afterward, they're just saying I'm autistic. Basically, that's what they're saying. What? Was that, is, that, is, yeah. that, is, that, is that really what they meant by it? I think so, yeah, because John is autistic. So they're saying I'm autistic. What kind so of painting What kind of, I mean, like, how, I mean, honestly, I don't, I don't even know how people got that John was autistic. I never... Maybe I don't have a good like radar or something like that, but I would have never guessed that he was in, until people started saying it. You know what oh, I mean? <laughs> um, I guess because of his affinity to the Bible and Andrew Tate, like <laughs> he's fascinated with those two things, the Bible and Andrew Tate. Um, I wish I could be there to hear him read the Bible every morning. That I think that'd be funny. I think it'll be funny if he read the Bible and I read the Quran. <laughs> <laughs> do you think? Uh, do you think John uh, converted anyone inside the tank? Do you think he was able to bring any any new Christ followers to uh, to the to the to, to the tank? I doubt it. I think what he's doing <laughs> have the opposite effect. I don't know if he noticed, but him reading the Bible and believing in Andrew Tate make people like don't want to fuck with the Bible. Because those two things are, like, on different spectrum. Uh-huh. You know, know I mean, that? If you, Ty, if you read the uh, Quran to John, would you do it as Andrew Tate? Would you, like, do Andrew Tate's voice? Uh, I don't think I could do that guy voice. But <laughs> if I practice, then I probably could. Because he have a very, like, kind of, like, it's, very... It's a mixed bag of yeah. um, of like inflection or something. It's like very. Yeah, unique. I, I can't tell if it's British or like just a really like New mm -hmm. Yorker no northeastern like fusion. You know. I mean, it's been like he delivered all of his nine very deliberately. 
Like, he enunciate A, B lines. Yeah. So it makes it seem like everything he says, he's very passionate about. Do you, do you have, Ty, do you have any, like, uh, crazy ideologies? We're talking about Andrew Tate and the Bible. Uh, what are your crazy um, ideologies? I believe that we live in a simulation, but I don't think that's that crazy of an ideology. Did you think that before Fish Tank Live or after Fish Tank Live? Uh, before Fish Tank. Do you think Do you think Elon has had a significant effect on that theory, or do you think that a lot of people felt that way before he even said that 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 famous tweet? I felt like a lot of people felt that way before, but since mm-hmm. he's somebody famous, it helped them validate themselves, so they're not too embarrassed to say it themselves. Oh, that's very insightful, yeah. Yeah. No, I think... Go ahead. Plus, after you tell somebody that you think we live inside a simulation, like, where do you go from there in that conversation? Like, it's <laughs> almost like a dead-end conversation. You, you know offer I mean? a red pill or a blue pill, basically, at that point. Yeah, I know. Definitely not a good first date, uh, <laughs> I don't know. You know, I mean, like, imagine 20, imagine like, you know, eat my steak, leave me alone. 10, 10 years, 10 years from now. I mean, that, 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 that'll probably just be like, you know, how, how two couples meet and find and fall in love with each other. You know, like, oh, she, she thinks that she thinks that too, you know? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. I, 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 I think, I think that's really funny. I mean, I think, I think you're spot on there. I think that, uh, most people think that being a fan of the Bible and Andrew Tate simultaneously is like a walking contradiction. And so, yeah. um, and, and, and there, but there's something, there's something that's so pure about it whenever John says it versus what 90, 90% of the other internet that might say that too, you know, you know what I mean? It's like, um, there's something very special about John's affinity, uh, versus like the normal yeah. Twitter bot that like is like an Andrew Tate dick sucker, you know, like, you know, you know, you know what I mean. It's just there's something very uh, arch- archetypal, maybe you know, something like that. He's very sincere. Sincere, yeah. Very sincere in his, but yeah, he's very sincere and he believes it with his heart. So who's to tell him what he believes in is wrong? Right. Exactly. Exactly. I, I, go ahead, I thought there was something Plus, very poetic to, too about like roll down uh, your other window, Ty. Roll down the other window. Yeah, go down. Uh, Oop, so. car accident. There we go. There we go. Oh, uh, that's a blue car right next to me. Hey, blue car. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Can I take yeah. your order? I mean, if somebody. If somebody was walking to their car right now, they think I'm recording them and shit. they will be like, nah, I'm just doing a podcast. And that's not like a lie. <laughs> hey, <laughs> let me ask, like, after being on Fish Tank, how do you feel about your comedy? How do you feel about you as a comedian, Ty? Um, like, where do you like, see your future now? Um, my future as a comedian is always like uncertainty because you don't know what that thing will come from that make you a career pop. So I, I have several moments where I thought, oh, this is going to make my career, but, uh, nothing big yet. I just have like pop here and there. Yeah. What do you think about the way you entered Fish Tank versus some of the other contestants? Um, I feel like I enter and I really fuck with them and then I laugh. So, um, like a stand up. Oh, my stand up. No, 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 it's like a stand up. You like enter the stage and then you, you say your bit and then you leave, you know, you kind of leave the aftermath. I'm comparing Um, comparing your time on fish tank to like a stand up. So fish tank, um, I don't know. Fish Tank is more like direct and real interacting with other contestants. So I didn't feel like 
I was doing any stand up. I mean, if anything, it's more like improv, playing with uh the challenges and stuff. So it's still more like improv than stand up. I will I will say there 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 were a couple times when you, when you did do stand up uh when, when you when you were telling some oh, jokes oh doing stand up in the fish tank was terrible got a contestant to sit there <laughs> yeah but like there was there was like there there were like there was like this this monumental moment because it's like there was like a a, a moment where Sam was Sam of all people was like worried about some of the content or like the nature of the jokes that that, that that you were saying and everyone online is like saying how how you basically like got canceled and then you uncanceled yourself through like your like comedy magic kind of you know <laughs> like you were able to kind of like side sidestep you know yeah i was very devastated when i found out i was canceled which turned out to be a prank but during that time i was very de- devastated so um you know um i thought about it you know i'm a trying to stay in fist tank for a week and once i go back i'm gonna explain everything like hey, it's just <laughs> uh none of the shit i said was even that serious i was just so caught up like in the moment i thought it was real he saw he showed me all the the photoshop social media posts and i fell for it and i guess that's one of uh, a comedian worst fears being canceled in his hometown and have his shows canceled at a comedy club. Um, so, you know, after that night, I just snapped. And during the morning, I thought about just trolling, like, the viewer. So I kept looking at the camera and say, uh, I respect women and Native American Indian. I don't know if y'all noticed that. But the next day, I kept on saying that to the camera. And I kept saying that to the contestant. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think- do you think that there was like any like sense uh that like you were gonna like win some people over and this like these like these uh hypothetical like online haters that like started like you know uh rushing to cancel you like do you do you think that they would like kind of like catch on that you were just kind of like poking fun at like their their action against you and like that would like because it's like you know how it's like if someone's like mad at you like if you can make yeah. them like laugh you know like they'll They'll, they'll kind of stop being mad, you know, a little bit, you know? Yeah, I mean, I was trying to do that the next day by just uh, being kind of, like, ironic about the situation, just playing around, say that, oh, I have to watch what I say now. I can't say certain thing about women or Native American Indian because I'm known as a racist. So I was just playing with that, like, <laughs> pretty much the... The rest of the time after finding out I was canceled. So I was hoping that they'll get it. Oh, he's trying to play that role of a guy that's very sorry. I know, I know, I know, I know I've been hogging all the questions here for a second. I'm going to let Xval go, but I, I, I have one more thing to add to this kind of because it'll help kind of us understand and our audience understand more so like how, how much do, do you, did you know about Sam's own experience uh, with like dealing with that? Uh, and, and and his whole adult swim fiasco years ago and like understanding what like what he's experienced as a as an entertainer uh through like basically not being like allowed to do his his performance where basically after he had made it big you know his his, his biggest break i didn't know about sam and was sam until after first tank so to me he was jason ghost Rocker. and i don't know if you know this like uh, the time that uh, he was on Fish Tank, like the first time he made an appearance and he talked to other contestants, um, I was fucking with him. So I was trying to get him to say the N word, the F word, and the C word. He said all three, and I was really shocked. Like, you could see my reaction on camera was shocked. Like, oh, this guy is crazy. He don't care about his career. So, yeah. Um, I just thought he was crazy for saying all those three of those racial slur. I mean, I could say the C one, Chink, but I'm not gonna say the other two. <laughs> what do you think about it? What do you think about it now? But now, knowing what you know now, what's your thoughts on it now? Um, now it's like, duh, that's not the worst thing he's done. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't checked out some of his sketches yet, but I check out his Wikipedia. So I found out that he did have a show on Adult Swim that got canceled, but he mm-hmm. still worked that show though. 
a world peace or something mm -hmm. and um and he get blamed for like whenever there's a mass shooting you know that like, yeah was that was, was that that was also yeah because okay so did you ever see a picture of sam uh before you knew him like blame for a mass shooting like like whenever you whenever you realized that that was like a thing that people always tag him like do you ever think back and you're like did i ever see that guy like being reported as, as, like, as like a shooter or like uh, I, I i it's so funny to like um hear a comedian like it's not super because not every comedian knows about sam but it's so funny to see a comedian's experience uh finding out about sam uh yeah. you know through through such a surreal experience of like getting to know him before you knew him like that's kind of a like for for, for viewers that's a very you know like odd you know sort of perspective to fall under you know yeah um so i did yeah, have i mean hot box racial slur to you <laughs> that's how you can tell me <laughs> um i mean you know the voice was there i'm like this guy definitely don't have a mainstream career. Like, <laughs> <laughs> he won't get any sponsorship. But he's, but he's making more money than all of us, right? Like, I just this oh, yeah. Yeah, he's making money. He's got a whole team that works for him. So he's a boss. Oh, um, definitely. definitely. Like, yeah. Is there anything you look up to, though? I mean, after meeting him in person, not, not, not the online stuff, but strictly your in person dealings and. Um, you know, that whole experience for you, is there, what do you look up m to most about that whole crew? They're, they're, what they're doing with Fish Tank? I respect the dedication to making it happen and staying on top of Uh-oh. Oh, oh your, your mic cut out there. You might have, you might have muted yourself. No audio. Uh, let's see. Try. Yeah, he's going to try rejoining. We're going to yep. get. We have about uh, 20 minutes left. Yeah, that, that was a great. <laughs> Only 25 minutes left. Hopefully that was a great, time. great first half. Great over first half. That was hilarious. You got um, him? Yeah, he's back in. About that. There we go. Yeah, yeah, you sound that. great. Uh, I have a phone call and it kind of fucks shit up. Oh, well, finish it. Fi yeah. Just answer that question for me because we didn't get that. Oh yeah, um, about Sam. What was it? Yeah, what what, uh, what was my question? Something to do like what? What do you? What's your takeaway after meeting Sam? Like, what do you look up? To, that's what it was. What do you look up to the most now oh, after yeah. meeting, meeting Sam and and the, uh, the whole crew and what they're doing with Fish Tank? Um. I respect the dedication into doing this project because this is something that's like I never seen it like DIY before. Every time that's a reality show, it's like a whole big network and so many people involved. But it's really just three person: uh, Jet, Tax, and Ben. They're like the shark, and they stay in the basement. And uh, one of them had to be awake at all time to watch the camera and stuff. And uh, Jason, he actually doesn't play that big of a role in it as far as the other three guys. So I admire the dedication and the courage to make this happen. Because this whole thing is, like, insane. Like, who else do something like this? And make it work. Yeah, and make it work. And make it exciting so because they didn't they uh, didn't have they didn't have a plan for like you like they didn't have a plan for uh simmons to like be there and then they need to get a replacement real quick so that that might have all been on the fly you know you're yeah, they do a lot of things on the fly uh a lot of the plot that they do is on the fly so they're really good at coming up with plot based on a character reaction um yeah that's smart so I found a YouTube comment that really nailed the show. Um, it's how crazy they seem together um, reality with uh, an actual reality and what and uh, what's the word for non-reality and uh, reality and acting like 
Yeah. So I guess that's like the art of the show. Like, even though it seemed kind of scripted with the challenge and stuff, and the shark telling the contestant kind of like what to do, but the contestant reaction is so real that I don't know. I guess that's the form of art. Can you While explain? I was in there, huh? Oh no, go, I, I like that. It's a form of art. Can you explain it this way? Since you're used to sort of like stand up versus improv. Yeah. Can you explain the show Fish Tank Live as a form of improv? Is there a way that you could make that kind of explanation about the show? Yeah, I guess is. I mean, the shark trying to make it seem like improv where all the challenges, but I don't know how all the character do react to everything very psychologically, or. Uh, what pushed them psychologically where they have breakdown and stuff. So I guess they play like really mean prank on the contestant. You don't think, do you think those pranks are planned or do you think that's, like I said, it's sort of a, a form of improv. It's like, well, we're getting this from the contestants. Let's give them this, you know, it's kind of choose your own. Yeah, adventure. It's, it's very improv and made up on the spot. Pretty much, yeah. I think I think I think the community is 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 also like the community is kind of like the co-pilot of like. Yeah, that's true. That's very very true. Yeah. Good point. So, uh, based on the community, you know how they call Nettie stinky. <laughs> yeah. They, yeah. they have her do stuff involving stinky shit, <laughs> <laughs> like pl planning the poop, <laughs> and then blame it on me. <laughs> It's so funny, right? Because doing right. that night, um, I was just going to get drunk and go home the next day. I didn't care about fish tank anymore after I broke the fish tank. <laughs> like, the producer was so tone deaf that they still did the whole poop thing. And they're trying to blame it on me. Like, I was still playing along. And I thought, wow, they're so tone deaf. They don't know I don't care anymore, but I still play along just for the fun of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I didn't care if everybody thought that I poop in a cup because I, I was going to go home the next day anyway. So I was like, okay, you could call me shitty Simon or whatever. <laughs> so you... you you have a you have a new single out. It's called Bloke the Fish Tank. I mean, it's it, it's actually pretty fire. You Thank know, you. like it's uh it's I think I think a lot of people, you know, some people understand, some people don't understand, but you know, to you, what does it mean? Like what does it mean to break the fish tank, you know, and like, you know, like what is what what, what does that mean to you? It means to me that it make all the contestants gave up on a challenge to where they don't care anymore. Because I don't know what the prize money is based on. I thought it had to do with them doing the challenge. So when all of them gave up on a challenge, like they weren't supposed to sit sit on the couch and put, put on their shoe. When all the contestants started to do that, I was like, okay, I did my job. I broke the fish tank. So nothing matters anymore. <laughs> you, turned it into, you turned it into Seinfeld, basically. A show about yeah. nothing. <laughs> yeah, a show about nothing. So so I feel like with that challenge and they couldn't do it, why would they do any other challenge? Shouldn't the challenge be harder? But to be honest, uh, my challenge was pretty hard, right? They can't wear shoes and Frank was just spitting all over the floor everywhere. <laughs> give us yeah. a give us your take on Frank. Like what was that like to meet Frank? Um I'm not going to lie. Uh, I was scared of Frank. Because uh, he fucked with everybody in the most disrespectful way. Yeah. So I didn't know much about him. But I was afraid that if he fucked with me, I'm going to have to put hands on him. Oh, my gosh. Uh, I don't know if y'all know this, but I don't like being touched. Like, I have, like, a, a instant reaction to being touched. So... I could have hit him, but luckily he was on my side and he really helped me broke the fish tank because, um, I don't know. I'm a nice guy. I'm not like Frank. Uh, so I couldn't do what Frank do when the contestant broke the rules. 
So he would kind of punish them, put them in a garage and other stuff. So he didn't give a fuck. So my presidency wouldn't work if Frank wasn't there. Are there Frank are, are, are yeah. intimidating? You what? Yeah. So so President uh, President Ty, um, I want to know like were the, I, I actually haven't haven't asked you this yet. The the answer might be no. But did, were there any freeloaders that you were aware of before uh, or after they? I mean, like were are, were any of the freeloaders people that that you knew of like online? Uh, uh, no. So I was the first freeloader. And then the second one was Chris, uh, which is, he's very famous, but I have no idea who he was. And then there's this girl named Elna who left in like three days or something because something happened to a friend. Um, and then Frank, um, I have no idea who they are. But the day Frank was coming, TTS keep on saying, oh, something bad is headed this way. A dark storm is coming. <laughs> like they keep on giving us a warning, and then Frank came at night. Yeah, how did they he make knew it about Frank? So he's how... supposed to be like an unknockable character after like enough TTS, or they donated some shit, so they unlocked him. So the audience knew about him. We didn't. Hey Ty, as Simon, yeah. ex- describe Frank's arrival to the fish tank. Um. Line. So he came at night, and uh, he came with some drink. And uh, when he came, uh, I guess he really don't give a shit. Cause he said, hey, Simon, the racist and homophobic comedian. <laughs> uh, and then he just kind of say, he just shit on everybody. Talk shit about them. Um, that's the nicest he been was the first night, pretty much. After that, he went crazy. The next day, he went crazy. Do you have anything nice to say about Frank? Uh, yeah. Uh, he helped me enforce the rules, and uh, I mean, he really helped broke the fish tank. Couldn't have done it without him. But he also made it a very bad place to be. Like the vibe there was just negative. Mm-hmm. Um, and also, um, I didn't want to deal with the contestant. So, y'all remember I made this rule: whatever they say to me, they have to tell Frank, and then Frank interpret yeah. what they say. <laughs> so I think they so they can't really complain because whatever they tell Frank, Frank don't give a shit. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I did that because I'm emotionally attached to the contestant. So. Uh, I didn't want to go easy. The person what do you, that what do you think of... is Chris. Chris couldn't get with the program. Like, we have a whole game plan. And Chris keep on being on their side. Do you, yeah. do you feel like Josie is, like, is like the whole... Like, is she... She she, she feels like a main character. Like, 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 a number one or, like, number two. You know, like, she's... Uh, she's she... definitely the fan favorite, like, by far. She have a lot of fans. Like mm-hmm. a lot. What I do you what say. do you what do you think she would do after this? I mean, like, what do you? I mean, I could I could see her doing Twitch if she didn't do that already, or maybe or maybe something. I mean, I, she's she, she's gonna have a, a wild career ahead. Um, if she wants. Yeah, so I guess pop- she can have a career that just stream and talk about her day. Could people are interested in what she do that day? Um, you know how Fatty have a career on YouTube and he just <laughs> posts about everything so i think she could do something very similar because she probably had the biggest fan base out of all the fishes i would say how do you think the other contestants viewed um simon oh how the other contestant view simon you yeah how did they view uh, you at first uh they like me they love me we all got along until they turned me into a bad guy. So I had to work, play the role with the bad guy and became president mm-hmm. and enforce these rules. Um, I really wanted to leave like that day when they made me president. And I had to come up with rules and enforce them. Because I, I thought, man, everybody is going to hate me. Uh, I don't like being hated, being a house with these people. 
So I'm kind of happy Frank came that night. So I felt like he took some of the heat off of me and onto him. But I was becoming the bad guy because Vance was calling me Slimy Simon. So, yeah. So when you when you left when you left Fish Tank Live, what do you think the the consensus was? Was there like did everyone share an idea about Simon or or was it like a everyone had their own opinion or like, was it good vibes or what what was going on? Um, I think they were very devastated. Y'all remember how I left? Uh, I can't remember exactly. I, 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 no, 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 no. I did. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. You won, or you left because you won, because you broke, and like they, they, they said that you yeah, like. Yeah, yeah. I broke the fish tank, and I won. Yeah, and that you're gonna, you were gonna get like a, a jet to like uh, Nevada. Yeah. You're gonna go to, to like Las Vegas. <laughs> yeah, and you remember like they have all of them say a nice thing about me, and I just <laughs> boast all of them. Now boast all of them again, and uh. <laughs> Yeah, I really play up to like I won a fifty K even though I knew it was a prank. So when they announced it, I just act really shocked. I went, I'm rich, bitch. <laughs> um they were devastated. Like I really broke the fish tank the day that I left. You notice uh after I left and they all thought I got the fifty K, they thought I got their grand prize. So you saw Nettie packing up her bag and stuff. And Sylvia wanted to leave too. She was in the garage just smoking a cigarette. Uh, so, yeah. So, so the who, producer was really trying to play on that. Um, so they had to say something before like the contestant actually leave. So they say something about we found another sponsor or whatever. Yeah, it's a very <laughs> mean prank that they play. That, on that is mean, contestant. especially. Especially after like all the time they spent so far. Like, yeah, uh, all the time, all the challenges they've been through, and I only been here for one week. But it kind of <laughs> worked because like the day before, I kept on saying that, "Hey, y'all don't care about a challenge. Uh, I don't know who's gonna win, stuff like that." So I keep on nagging that uh, none of them care about a challenge, and I care about a challenge. So. That's just show you how smart like uh, the producer are at this show. How to fuck with the contestant psychologically. Like it's fun watching it from the outside, but really you don't want to be inside the fish tank. You don't yeah, want to be a contestant. I mean, so. I mean, yeah. I think, I think, I think I was, I was scared. I was worried about Fatty and and like his like current living situation until they started raising like the 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 GoFundMe. Uh, which, yeah. by the way, everyone, there there is a GoFundMe for Fatty right now. I think he just crossed like over six thousand donations, but he's still he's, he's still at working. Eight thousand and five hundred right now, so he's almost at ten k. So keep on donating. Yeah. Yeah, I was worried about Fatty mental state being inside the fish tank. He seemed to be like the one affected by it the most, cause he had like several mental breakdown while I was there, and it wasn't even like serious stuff. It's a lot of, mm-hmm. yeah. it's, I mean, that's a lot of pressure. You think you'll stay in contact with Fatty or Airsoft? Uh, yeah, definitely. Fatty. Uh, I follow him on Instagram. He follow me on Instagram and he have access to a phone. Like he's posting shit right now. <laughs> like he's okay. Is it, is it, is it him, him posting stuff or does he have like a friend posting for him? Like I don't, I, I haven't been able to figure that out yet. Um, uh, it could be a friend now that I thought about it. Cause they, there's no way he posted him and the black hooker. Like he's he's posting like he's posting like 20 stories a day. Like <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, he even reposted some of my shit. But do you see the whole black hooker storyline? Yeah, the poop. How she want to have sex with him? Cause he smelled like shit. And his reaction I, after a word, he was staying inside the bathroom and want to come out. And go hey, I and hope like, I, you come out for a, a one fish box and like no, two fish box is like no. <laughs> I hope Dude. I hope that he got I hope I hope he got her number so that he can you know come to like a clean setting next time. I'm sure it wasn't him. I'm sure I'm sure it was just the fish tank smelling like poop. You know. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that room due to Frank it smelled like poop. <laughs> but they did find like poop stain on his shorts though. So they could have bought him new shorts. You know. He didn't have to wear those old shorts on his sex night. 
<laughs> Why did he wear those old shorts? He's more intimidating. Yeah. Like yeah, so I- those weren't even good looking shorts. Like <laughs> he could have worn better shorts. But that whole thing was so like funny would you, and would you like to see the it's like, Yeah. I mean, that would break anybody down. Like uh-huh. Yeah, somebody don't want to have sex with you because you smell like poop. <laughs> I never seen that before. And I, that's the craziest shit I've seen ever. Yeah, well, my my girlfriend's only said that to me once, but we we oh, yeah? we cleared we we, <laughs> we cleared that up. <laughs> oh, okay, <laughs> and your story. We, we 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 okay. I I have to ask you. I know we're we're getting close here, but I want to I want to ask you a a serious question about um. Who who it is you think has the most sincere? I'm not I'm not saying like you know like like the best chance of winning the grand prize, but who has the most sincere reason for wanting to have the the ten thousand dollars from what from what you've heard of what of what people might 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 use it for? I mean, I guess I guess it's down to just Letty, uh, Vance, and Josie. But I mean, like obviously, I'm not making you to I'm not asking you to make a prediction. But what do you, who do you um, think has the most sincere use of purpose? Huh. I mean, you know, uh, I don't know if Vance work or not, if they have a day job. I mean, you know, they keep saying his dad is rich and he owned a coal mine. <laughs> um, yeah. And Josie, That's a Josie, good she work in compost. So she I don't works know in what compost? she does, but she work in compost. Garbage. Like taking, like taking plant matter and breaking it down and turning it into like fertilizer, or like whatever. That's why it seems like it has something to do with garbage, compost. I remember her talking to me when I was doing the whole rebranding stuff. Uh, she told me that what she does. And Eddie, she don't have a job. She's twenty three and she don't have a job. And her reason is she's shy for not having a job. I mean. I'm not hating on her for not having a job. You know, if your parents pay for you. That's great. But how old is Josie? 21 and she have a job. So just for that, I kind of want Josie to win. But then again, I feel like Letty, she's like the villain that drive the show. And she took so much shit. Literally and mentally. So, you know... It'll be a tie between them that I want to win between Lady and Josie. Well, because we'll she's quite a necessary evil. Like, you think the show would be that much exciting if Lady wasn't there, or Sylvia, or even Daniel? Like, they're super hated, and people like to watch people they hate. Yeah, what? very insi- insightful. Yeah, make your prediction um, as. Um, Simon, who will win? I feel like Josie is going to win. If she don't win, there will be a serious uprising to where all her fans could just give her money, I bet, if she asks for money, you know? But really, I think all the stuff that Nettie been through, I think she should win for adding so much to the show, so much entertainment. Like, who got the most TTS making fun of them? Who do y'all think TTS make fun of the most? Probably Letty, yeah, probably. Letty, right? Yeah. To me, it's Letty and Sylvia. They keep on making fun of Sylvia calling her a pig and aren't, aren't. <laughs> like, a lot. She, 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 has, she has a killer band, though. She, she has an awesome, awesome music uh, career yeah. that, 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 that she's doing. Uh, yeah. and it's crazy. It's crazy that she's from Tulsa, that she's from Tulsa, Oklahoma too. So yeah, it's kind yeah, of we crazy. Were, yeah. We were, we were, we were definitely rooting for her from that aspect, but, um, yeah, yeah I, don't, I, I, I think, I think you're spot on. I've, sorry. she's out now. You should get her on the podcast. Yeah. We might try. I would love to have her as a guest and yeah, I think, I think you can. Boring. Yeah. I mean, um, most of the contestants, right. In the contract, they can't do podcast for three months, mm-hmm. but I'm allowed to do it because uh, the producer, they really fuck with me. Like, they see that I'm very, like, level-headed. 
Yeah, so they gave me permission. So this is the second podcast I've been on. Oh, great. Yeah. Well, we're 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 happy to have you and uh you know anytime uh we'd love to come out and like see a show i i know i come to austin you know at least like maybe once a year so uh okay. i'd I love this yeah. i'd love to see you actually yeah. todd i i've been traveling meeting with uh, different digital creators and uh we we basically kind of do like a docuseries profile uh-huh. on these creators and i might be interested in coming to austin and you know like maybe filming you on on stage and maybe some stuff in your real life, maybe the back of your car. And, yeah, I'll be uh, down for that. I'll you know, like talk that. about you more and kind of like uh, things you're into. So yeah, yeah for yeah. sure. Uh, yeah, let me know. I'll be down. All right. Well, thank you so much for uh, talking to us. I think that, <laughs> like like Xvalis said, the back of the car is such a funny setup. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a nice car too. Oh, you thank do, you. you. You could you you could do a lot of things in the back of that car, but I bet hey, I could throw a comedy but, 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 but you're no sim you're no Simmons. So yeah, we- I'm no Simmons. <laughs> <laughs> uh, have, we, have we seen the last of Simon, Ty? Um, you know, uh the producer asked me if I wanna be on season two. And I told him I'll be down, so Oh my gosh, I mean, really? I, I, I don't know what, huh? Shocked right now after what you just described to us. I'm shocked that you're going to say yes, but that's cool. I'm happy. Um, it'll depend on what I'll be doing. I don't know when season two is going to be. I hope they give it at least a year break, you know? Could be too, mm-hmm. too quick. Do you think do you think uh what what they're doing right now with Fish Tank is going to be their springboard into the all the all the MDE uh world peace? Uh, new content that's coming out? Uh, I think it's something different from War Peace. Because Fish Tank is more of like Jet, uh, Jet Baby. Like, he's mm-hmm. more of in charge and running shit. But you know they're going to come out with, uh, I think they're going to make, turn all the days into more like, more of like a, a reality show format with episode and stuff. You know what I mean? That's why they have the mm. close-up camera and stuff. Right. So I'm excited to see that that product itself. Like an, an so, edited, an edit, an edited type uh, yeah. episodic thing. Yeah, edited and you know, good graphic, good audio. That'll think, be a whole different experience than what we have yeah. online. So that product, I feel like it's gonna springboard them. Yeah, and uh, I don't know about. All the stuff that got captured like twenty four seven, if it's online, or they keep it somewhere. But all the fans that watch like that short product will want to go back and go to the timestamp and watch the full thing of the live stream. So I think that's gonna springboard them to fame. Mm. Yeah. yeah. It's 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 definitely been like uh, a an etched stone in internet history for sure. And, and I think that I it, think like what they did is so radical that they could have make a documentary on the crew, the background crew, and that documentary would be a good something people would want to see. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. I mean, I think that's gonna. I I, I think this is definitely gonna be something that gets. Uh, gets Wikipedia pages written about it, you know, already. Yeah, it already, it's already definitely has like a part of internet history. Absolutely. Yeah. And one of the better parts. What, one one, one yeah. quick question. Why, why, why is Fish Tank, like, why is it, there, there's so many people who would never watch Big Brother or like Glass House or like mm. any of these other like uh, reality shows that are like Fish Tank, that the that, that Fish Tank was sort of like a, a model from but like why 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 do you think all the people who watch fish tank would never watch those other reality shows i mean some of them might but it seems like a lot of them wouldn't you know i think fish tank kind of attract the younger generation and the old one too i feel like a lot of the fans are actually young do you notice that oh yeah. Sure, sure yeah so there's this whole new like fan base from like gaming, uh, Discord, Twitter and stuff that weren't around during the Nettle Brother and all the other reality show. 
So this one is more of like uh kind of like people that make meme and stuff. People that more online. Um, the Discord Twitch fan that they kind of have. Um, it's just way through like the Discord server, Twitter and stuff like that. Yeah. I don't even like go on Discord, but I know that Fish Tank, like people make Discord to talk about it. Discord, Reddit. So it's kind of like an internet thing. Yeah, yeah, you fish tank, you don't have to go on Discord. That's a step down. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, Ty, I can't thank you so much for uh, taking the time. And uh, I think this is going to be a really awesome uh, episode that people will love to see and, 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 and hear kind of your your internal thoughts about this process, but also what's been going on in your life. And uh, I just want to give you the last word, you know, say anything that you want to plug or just any any wisdom that you'd like to give people who uh, who follow your stuff. Um, any wisdom? Uh, think it, dream it, do it. You know what that's from? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> think it. Okay, let's let's do yeah. it on the outro, okay? Let's let's let's, let's try to sync it up. Okay, hold on, three. Hold on. Before we do that, I want to say, Ty, it's really been nice to meet you. Uh, through through doing this, I discovered Me your too. stand up, and I really enjoy it. It's uh, it actually makes me laugh when I watch it online, and that's so unusual. Oh, thank so, you. Yeah. So I will be oh, watching. Appreciate it. Yes, and uh, thank you again for coming on Meme Ranch, and uh, hopefully we can sit down in Austin and uh, just do some stuff IRL. So, all right, you ready? Go ahead. Kaylin. Three, two, one. Think it, dream it, do it. 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 Meme Ranch.